Over a year ago, I launched a project to turn a budget deer rifle like this axis into a long-range precision rifle. If you were following this playlist from the beginning, you know that the experiment was pretty much a success. The rifle itself was excellent, and I was able to take it to a 600-yard match and prove it, and it actually came out pretty well. There were a couple of problems. Make sure that you subscribe to see how we address some of these problems. And we're definitely breaking the budget by now. The original was about $500 for the whole budget, and that didn't get us much. It got us primarily this Simmons 6 to 24 by 44 millimeter mil dot scope, which had some issues mostly with the glass. The glass was keeping me from getting small groups like I really need when I get out to 600 and 1,000 yards. Now we're continuing with the project, like I said, and we're doing some upgrades like the butt pad here, which helps with comfort a whole lot. This makes this a much more fun gun to shoot. Uh, we're putting a bipod on the front, and most importantly, we are swapping out that scope. So what we're looking at today, this is a Falcon M18 Plus. This is a scope that comes out of the UK. It is made in China, like most of this stuff now, but it is designed in the UK, and it is a very fine scope. I was really excited to take this out two days ago uh, to see what I could do with this, to kind of contrast it with you know some of the other optics that I've uh, used on this rifle and tried out. And uh, this thing is really nice. Let's take a close look. As far as I can tell, the M18 Plus is optically and mechanically identical to its older brother, the M18, which is a really good thing. The M18 had a good formula going for it. It's a tactical style of scope, so you have you know great big turrets you can grab up here. You don't have any turret caps. Uh, you have a 30 millimeter tube with 24 milliradians up and down, left and right. So you get quite a bit of adjustment there. You have kind of a medium range on the uh, uh, your magnification. So you have 4 to 18, which is a really good spread. 18 is fine for you know everything, including varminting. I've done varminting with 14x. Uh, 18x is quite nice. And then you can get pretty low if you're going to be taking shots at closer ranges or at uh, larger animals. You have side focus which I much prefer over adjustable objectives. Adjustable objectives are a real pain in the neck when you're trying to roll focus on an object that is might possibly be popping back down into its hole like a prairie dog. Um, it's a real pain to get out here and try to adjust this. So it's really nice to have everything right up here. Both the elevation and windage turrets adjust 0.1 milliradians per click and 10 milliradians all the way around. So you get quite a bit of adjustment and you have a decently fine adjustment on both of these. Some of the goodies that come with the scope include a pair of stackable sunshades. Uh, I use both of these since a lot of the time I am taking shots pretty much directly into the sun. Uh, at least the sun is very low on the horizon. I want as little glare as possible. Uh, you also get these upgraded flip caps. These are quite a bit better than the ones that came on the M18. These just feel more solid and they seal up very tightly. So you get one on the back and one on the front. And while we're talking about upgrades, let's take a look at this new elevation uh, turret knob. This is a little bit larger in diameter and it has a sort of checkering here at the top so it's pretty easy to grab. It just makes it a little bit more precise when you're making these turns. Instead of having to look at the, uh, the small graduations on the other model, uh, this one makes everything a little bit bigger. It's a little bit easier to use. We also have a new zoom ring. This is enlarged. And this is set up so you can easily read what magnification you're on just by picking your head up a little bit. You don't have to move very far. With most scopes, you have to come all the way off the scope in order to see what magnification you're on. And on this, you just pick your head up a little bit and you can see. Pretty slick. Now for the most important question, starting with what is the glass like? Since the glass was the Achilles heel of the last scope, and the last scope was the Achilles heel of the whole rifle system, this one is pretty important to me, and I'm really happy to say that this is vastly improved. This is excellent, excellent glass. Not just better than the Simmons, that's kind of a silly comparison. The Simmons glass is pretty bad. But uh, it did fool me on the, uh, the garbage bin O truth when I tried to find what resolution it was. Both of these came out quite well. But this one works all the time. Every time that I get to you know maximum adjustment on one of the dials, or if I'm out at all kinds of different ranges, 
this glass always performs. I was able to read Mirage very easily when I was out on the range, and I was able to shrink my group significantly. Take a look at this. This is 600 yards at a man silhouette target. Here's the big white dot that I was aiming at at 600 yards. And here's my group. There's one, two, three, four, five. And that's not in order. I don't know which shots were first. I imagine that these were the first two and uh, these were the later. Um, but this is indicating something good, even though it is a big group. Uh, the total vertical dispersion is not that big. It's all within my hand at 600 yards. Uh, and over here, it's definitely within my hand as far as the vertical goes. And what we have is a lot of uh, horizontal displacement. And that is just because the wind is really tricky today. Um, Red Castle is known for shifting winds, and we definitely got them today. Uh, the mirage was just all over the place. Sometimes it was going left to right, sometimes right to left, sometimes boiling. And I'm trying to read the grass and the flags, and I think we're actually dealing with multiple winds at the same time, which, again, is very common here. The winds will actually swirl. Uh, but I think that the scope is doing its job. So as long as I do my job better in the future of reading the wind, then I think this thing will be fantastic at the, uh, the matches. And you might remember with the Simmons that we are swapping the scope out for, the group used to be basically from this point up to here. You had this massive vertical stringing. So this is tightening everything back up, and it's my job to tighten up the windage. The news is good on this end of the scope too. You don't have to hunt and peck trying to find the image. There's a really forgiving eye relief. You can be a little closer, you can be a little bit further, and it's just really easy to get on this thing. The other big question that we need to ask is whether it is mechanically precise. And I'm referring both to the turrets and to the reticle itself. And I tested both of these in the field shooting some silhouette animals. And both of these worked just great. It was really easy to get on targets anywhere from 200 meters out to 600 yards, which is where the, uh, the humanoid silhouette was. We had rams at 550, we had turkeys at 400, and pigs at 300 meters. And everything was very precise on this thing. Uh, the, the turrets worked great, everything came back to zero. And the reticle, which is a B20, this is a Brabant 20, uh, it's a very nice, fine reticle. Um, I think that this one strikes a really good balance between having the fineness that you want for varminting, uh, and it, it's not so fine that you're going to lose it when you're trying to hunt other animals. And this one, the M18 Plus, has the option of second focal plane or SFP, or first focal plane, FFP. This model is the SFP one. They wanted me to try this out. This one costs a little bit less. This is $320. And the, uh, the first focal plane, like this uh, older M18 here, this is running for about $350. And both of those prices are excellent. I'll keep my notes brief on the SFP versus FFP issue. But I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people assume that a second focal plane reticle is inferior to one that places the reticle in the first focal plane. And I really think that nothing could be further from the truth. I perceive both of these as totally unique animals, and each one is going to be better at a certain thing. I'm going to get into this on another video, uh, so wait for that. But suffice it to say, for what I'm doing here, target shooting, or varminting, something like that, this is actually going to be my preferred reticle, a second focal plane. And this B20 that we're using is a really good match for that. I was able to test this out, and you can really stretch out the shots. And in a lot of cases, you can make very precise changes based on wind input. Or if your elevation's a little bit off, it's easy to make slight changes. Before I get too excited about this scope, and I really am excited, to be able to shoot this thing in the upcoming matches, I think this is going to perform extremely well. Uh, I have a 600 yard match coming up and a 1000 yard match. Those are gonna be back to back Saturdays and we definitely will be covering those. So for those of you that have been waiting for the uh, this past year in order to see how it does at 1000 yards, we're finally gonna be vindicated. 
but it does have a couple of downsides, so I'll discuss those. First off, there is some color fringing that you're going to get uh, looking through this, especially at contrasting objects. Like say you have a bright sky behind a darker object, uh, silhouetted things you're going to get some color banding or uh, chromatic distortion, specifically color distortion. So you're going to get a little bit of that blue and yellow fringes on the edges of things. And it's really not a showstopper. Uh, it is a little bit weird, but the resolution is still there. Uh, resolution is fine. So it's, it's really easy to you know read Mirage and see all these little details, even in low light which is one of the things that uh, I discussed about the M18 before. Low light capabilities are actually quite nice. Uh, I was out at dusk with some of these and you can still see all kinds of details. Very nice scope and lower light, despite the fact that it's only a 44 millimeter objective. Uh, would I say that this is, you know, a dusk deer gun? Probably not, but uh, it definitely does better than most in its category. But the other issue is the windage turret right here. Uh, this one, it was a little bit mushy. Spinning one direction, it was usually clicking quite nicely. And then if I spun the other direction, it might be quiet. Um, or I couldn't really feel it that well. And it might be that this is a break-in issue. Uh, I'll keep you posted over time to see if this improves. But this is one where I had to look over and check it every so often uh, to make sure that I was in the right spot. Because I couldn't really feel it and couldn't really hear it. Uh, usually if I spun you know, more than one click, then it got a little louder after that, but it was usually that first click that was a little bit spongy. And here's an item to note for you AR shooters. That oversized zoom ring might interfere if you have any of those uh, fold flat sights that lie under your ocular bell. Uh, in my case, I don't think this scope would work on my AR since I have a, uh, a GG&G multi-aperture device folded underneath. I don't think this would fit. It might, but uh, you might want to check on that if you are planning to run this over your backup iron sights. So what's the final takeaway? What is this scope? Is it a budget scope? I would say yes, since the price tag is about $320 for this one, and it's about $350 right now for the FFP model, and that just has to do with the American and British exchange rate. But these are so much more than what their price tag implies. For about the same price as like a Leopold VX2, you can get something that really has excellent glass, and it has great turrets in a 30 millimeter tube. Uh, I've never had the turrets mess up on either of these. I've been using this one for a good long while now. I've been testing this one for, what, about a year and a half, and it is fantastic. It always comes back to zero. Uh, anytime I turn the dials, I'm not worried about it missing anything, you know, messing anything up between shots. It just plain works. And now the competition that we're gonna be looking at, there really isn't much right now. All the big companies like Bushnell and Leopold and Nikon, everybody's going to these bullet drop compensating reticles, which this is just my personal opinion, I don't like. If I want to take precision shots out at all kinds of different ranges, like if I'm out doing my prairie dog shooting, I don't want a bullet drop compensator. I don't want to have a rough guess of where my bullets are going to go. First, I want a reticle that I can actually use to estimate the range to the target, and then I want one that I can very precisely lay down my fire right on that small target. Those bullet drop compensators just, they don't really work for me. I could see them for maybe larger targets or, you know, for these uh, designated marksman type rifles. But for the sort of shooting that I do, which is precision, varminting, uh, target shooting, or maybe those, those guys out there that do long range hunting, uh, this is a much better option. And these things are getting rarer and rarer. In a way, this is kind of an old school scope in that it has all this precision and it doesn't have uh, some of the weird little features that you get on scopes now. So the final takeaway is that I really recommend this scope for anybody that wants to do precise shooting. I think you'll be really happy with it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. There's more content on the way and the tension is building as the clock counts down to next month's matches. The whole playlist is right here if you want to see what happened up to this point. We also have a couple of other optics reviews that you might find interesting. And check this out. The Social Regressive is now on Patreon. If you want to become a patron of the Destructive Arts, a few bucks a month can help us produce more high-quality videos. You might have noticed the improved lighting, sound, and video quality. We have big plans for the future, and your patronage can help make it happen.